It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. And welcome back to another edition of Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. You guys always hear me say, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Yeah, some of those times I'm lying. But this time, I'm not. I have one of my best friends, another uh, podcast host, too. I guess we have to talk about their shit that they do. But nonetheless, it's one of my best friends that I met years ago. In parts unknown, Pennsylvania, huge wrestling fan, huge baseball fan, again a podcaster, he's going to bring it all today, and prior to us recording, his dog lost a wrestling match with a blanket, Mr. Michael Jenks. Jenksy, how are you? I'm great, you know, I'm going to go pile on that shit today for the podcast, but I got to say... Bailey lost a blanket or match to the blanket that has a tiger's face on it, so she just couldn't beat the tiger blood that was running through its veins <laughs> at that point. So, <laughs> how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. We talked a little bit prior to coming on, and you know, this is Sunday that you guys are listening to this, or maybe Monday or Tuesday or whenever the hell you guys decided to listen to this. By the way, we are not PC at all, Jenk. So just let them go. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Saturday, we talked, Jenks, that uh, we did nothing, and we enjoyed it. Uh, it was fantastic. It was probably the most relaxing I've had. I've been on a staycation for the past three days, and this I did absolutely nothing yesterday. And it was fantastic. You were elbow deep in college football and whiskey from the way we were talking. So <laughs> I was <want> early, <laughs> early, but I didn't get, you know, Mark drunk as fans from Can Crushers know. I was actually just sipping Maker's Mark all day. And just like you, I, I watched game day and I wasn't hugely invested in game day because the, the Comcast guy or Xfinity guy or whatever, here comes Max already. Um, was was down here doing some stuff to our internet. We went faster and all that. So, but then the Penn State game started, and it was like there was a nothing else in the world. I was so invested in the Penn State game. Then I jumped all over because Pitt just literally crushed UMass. But I watched Creighton for the love of God. I, I was watching anything, you know, University of Louisiana Monroe's third cousin. But then we got to the game of the night, and this is where we talked too. Holy crap, Georgia and Clemson! I, I love that game. I was just, and I want you to tell what you were deep diving into too, and because we both agree, uh, the traditions. Yeah. Oh yeah. But well, not to cut you off about, but I'm going to go to Clemson and Georgia to start because I love a good defensive matchup, and that's exactly what that was. But it left the question of whether I thought Clemson was that terrible or Georgia's that good so I don't know but going off of that the traditions man I'm head over heels in love with college football and just seeing the traditions come back jump around from Wisconsin was fantastic yeah do you want to make a trip up there I kind of want to I want to go to Madison I got a contact in Wisconsin we could we could find a way in there Uh, nice I want to jump around a little bit I might one time I'll have a heart attack I'll, I'll probably not be able to walk for about a solid week afterwards because my knees will be shot, but it'll be well worth it because I just want to join that atmosphere. But uh, everything under the sun yesterday was just fantastic. I didn't, I wasn't sipping on Maker's Mark for the whole day, but I had to go to, I went to the Seawolves game in between college football games. So I had a little bit of across the spectrum day, if you will. So, wow. Yeah. Well, look at you. Uh, well, did you hook up with some of your homies up there? Well, I talked to a few people. I saw Mr. Craig J. Brownstoner at one point. Uh, hello! Uh, hello! Uh, we, uh, we exchanged, exchanged pleasantries at that point. But yesterday was, Mark, I don't know if you remember the movie, That Thing You Do. I do. With Tom Hanks in that. I saw they the pictures the, uh, of Golden Pipes wearing one of those jerseys, which, by the way, those jerseys looked fucking from. <laughs> amazing they were fantastic they had 20 of them in sale they were down to four within 
about 30 minutes of the gates opening. Oh. So they sold 16 of those jerseys, but it was, they had the cast there. So it was a good night watching the O Needers take the field and sing, take me out to the ball game, which was pretty, pretty nice. So it did was you, a good day. Did you get one of those jerseys? Are you still a collector of jerseys, Jenks? I, I love my jerseys. I did not get one of those jerseys um, because mainly because they didn't have my size, but <laughs> Usually when I find they have their specialty jerseys, they don't have ones that go up to that size. Uh, I got a bigger be- beer belly than most, so more like a keg at this point. But So that's, that's uh, because Ray Burris isn't there anymore. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> I don't have an advocate anymore to get those bigger jerseys, so it is what it is. Right. Yeah. Uh, I-, I was thinking about it at one point this year about going up because I really the neon green popped. I'm like, man, that would be yeah. a cool jersey. Not to hang in my wrestling room, but to hang somewhere because I have all those ones that when we were at the Sea Wolves, the the breast cancer one, the garbage one, the mm-hmm. a ton of them. Jenks they, they haven't been hanging anywhere for ten years. They're just <laughs> in my desk thinking, well They're just there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have Mark Sorensen, which uh I think he's selling insurance now. But nonetheless, Deke Scram, all those guys, yeah. Well, I'm surprised you don't have them hanging up, though, Mark, because I felt like that would have been something you would have framed and put up by now. Is it just you don't have the space or you just don't want to keep them stored away for special memories? I, no, I, I want them up. It's My wife doesn't want me hanging them in the living room and they're in the kitchen. <laughs> I have my my studio, my podcast room, and that, of course, since we're a wrestling podcast, has all my wrestling uh, memorabilia. Uh, rem- oh my god, I can't even talk. Maybe the maker's mark's still hitting memorabilia <laughs> up. So I, I don't have a place to put all these sweet baseball jerseys that I've collected or whatever over the yeah. years. But I won't stop buying them. I'm like, I need this. I need this. I need this. And she's like, Where are you putting these? You won't let me take down the, the family picture and put it in the living room. So I don't know. <laughs> What if you put the family picture in one of the jerseys? So you frame the jersey and then have the family picture in the center of it. That is a freaking uh, brilliant idea. So see, that way you're like, what is it, matting? You're just matting the picture around and just giving it a little bit of a pop. See? Uh, I'm trying to help you out, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get done recording and I take down uh, the 11 by 17 family picture and put a picture inside of, I don't even know who I have right beside me. Uh, whatever. What are you doing? And I'm like, uh, I made a frame for the family picture and Jacob Turner's <laughs> autograph is right over her face. Yes. I have a feeling this might be the last time I'm allowed to talk to you. Uh, no, no. She was so, she was actually so pumped. She's like, oh man, we should go to a Seawolf's game with Jenks. I'm like, well, yeah, since they have one more game, I think we probably shouldn't go to this year's Seawolf's games. I didn't make a Seawolf game at all this year. And I don't know if I'm sad about it or just eh, because baseball hasn't been baseball yet for me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I get that. It it still has that weird feeling around it for me as well. It's not fully back yet, I guess, in my mind. But I had to go to the Seawolves this year because, A, the new renovations, it drew me in. I had to see what they did, Yeah, see if things were still leaking like they were before. <laughs> but um, <laughs> everything looks great, by the way. I, that's not a knock on them. It was just the way the old stadium was. But everything looks great, and they did a wonderful job there. But uh, I had to go. There was no way I could not go. I, I I live near there from parts unknown, but right. Uh, so you you just have to make the trip. You you are literally like what three blocks away, aren't you? Actually, I'm further away now. I'm across town. Oh, um, okay. I moved. I moved uh, a couple years ago, so I have a house across town, but it's still within five ten minutes of driving distance it's not that far away so it's not a three-hour trip back and forth just to make hot dogs huh yeah no it's not no no i there's some guy that did that and i admire him to this day for that commitment because i don't know who's stupider I, the guy I, or the you for admiring him <laughs> well you know we needed somebody to make the hot dogs and it was just an inspiration to us all for buck nights and that so <laughs> yeah uh. So, as you guys can tell, we met when we were both working at the Erie Sea Wolves. And Jenk's not from Erie. He's from Parts Unknown. And yep. as is 
his podcast with his two best friends. Um, I know Cody real well because he worked with the Sea Wolves with us in the ticket office. It's awesome because we all have this different realm. You were operations, he was mm-hmm. management slash tickets, and I was the the media side. So we kind of, if we would have actually come together earlier, we would have been the NWO running <laughs> the Erie Sea Wolves. It's taken over. It would have been too sweet at that point, is all I'm going to say. But well, Mark, to that point, what was amazing to me, and Cody's told me this uh, several moons ago, but when we were working there, is before I started, there was a definite line of division between you were in ticket sales versus you were in ops versus you were doing media or marketing. There wasn't a lot of mingling at that point. I'm not saying I helped bring everybody together, but what I'm saying is there's a lot of, you know, everybody was in their own realm and corner, but something happened that brought us all together, so... I was really happy that we could all become friends and share a lot of experiences during that time. Yeah, days that the team was on the road, um, our side of the office, nobody works there now, so I don't think we can get in trouble, was a complete shit show. I, yeah. I, I took over Golden Pipes' office, and Sporkle or ball games were being played inside the office, and we're like, hey... You want to go to the batting cage? <laughs> yeah, let's go to the batting cage. I have all access to that. So we went to the batting cages. and uh, Yeah. It was a blast. I mean, I remember, I, I think you had been gone by the time this happened. But there was a point in time where the former director of entertainment and I had a sumo contest in the hallway. Where he put on the sumo costume. And I, because I'm a bigger guy, just ran at him. And... <laughs> He flew back, and he's like, "I'm never doing that again." But that was fun. So that was <laughs> that was probably a highlight. It just shows the insanity that happened when nobody was in town, and we didn't have too much work to do at that point. But right, yeah. <laughs> so let's tell everybody before we do our deep dive into wrestling because we have a we have we do have a lot to cover this week. I mean, we're not going to deep dive into matches or anything. We just do hot takes and stuff like that. And we have some sad news. And if you follow yeah. wrestling, you know. But let's tell everybody about the forty year dash. You, Cody, and Moochie, that bum that is just <laughs> on your show. Um, tell everybody the concept about it and. How, how you can just fall in love with this podcast because when you guys first started this i'm like oh man these guys are gonna have like their shit together and they're trying to do cool things by the time they're 40 i'm 43 when this started and i'm like man i i really don't want to listen because their goals are gonna be like we're gonna cure cancer and we're gonna we're and i'm like oh, because i followed you guys all the time and i'm like oh man I, this is gonna make me feel sad and now it makes me feel sad because uh, I've watched The Godfather twice since your <laughs> podcast started, and somebody has not. But I'm also just as bad as Moochie right now because <laughs> your present is still sitting directly right in front of me. I wasn't sure if I'd have to bring that up or if you had to bring that oh, no. up. But... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know who brought it up again? Kelly. She was like... You ever gonna send that to Jenks? He really needs it to meet Dave Grohl, and I'm like, huh. you. I yeah, I keep thinking about it, and Cody keeps asking me about it when we're about to record, and I'm like, I haven't seen it from Mark yet, and I don't want to be that guy that's like, hey, you sending that or what? I'm gonna. Like, I just hate going to the mail store or the <laughs> post office or whatever the hell it's called. I hate going there. I get that. I mean. A, it's it's on track with, and this is just for inside context on the 40-year dash, my one friend, Mucci, who is just insane in his own right, uh, is trying. To, it, one of his goals was to watch the entire Godfather series, and he's had my DVD set for, God, six months now. Oh, wow. And every time he says, I'm going to watch it, he never does. So now he's on the clock to watch it by the next episode, because if he doesn't, Cody and I get to change out one of his goals, so... We already have one in mind, so it's going to be very uh, enlightening at that point. But uh, to go off of that, though, the 40-year dash was basically, I hope you realize, Mark, that we don't have our shit together, and it's just a bunch <laughs> of crap that we're throwing together. Cause... I realized that once I was brought on the show as a special, <laughs> with my air quotes around special guest. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, we are just three good friends that Cody and I had actually had this discussion before we turned 30, which was about six years ago or so, where we're like, we should do 30 things before we turn 30. And it just never happened. It was when he was living in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the time. Um, we were not in the same city, so it was just a way for us to keep in touch. But it kind of just went to the wayside. And during the pandemic, it became very clear that we were missing each other, obviously. All three of us were missing that time hanging out with our friend group, just having a good time. So it came to light. Let's do 40 things by the time we're 40. We have seven years. So in Moochie's case, you can see how long he procrastinates and put things off. We all do it. So we have time now. Uh, so that's what it is. We're just trying to do 40 things that we find cool or interesting before we turn 40. And I think it really speaks to where our priorities lie uh, for each individual member of our podcast. Cody and Muti both have families. I'm a single guy who has a family. I support my uh, close family, but, you know, I'm just a single guy living a life with my dog, Bailey, who likes to give out husband that. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the preference of the podcast, and we just have a lot of fun with it. We quiz each other and give each other shit back and forth without fail. Mark got the experience at first hand, which, Mark, I did want to ask you about, because you got the fifth degree, third degree from Moochie right out of the gate. So how did you think about that questioning series that hit you right off of your bat? He gave right me like bat. 20 questions in 20 seconds. First of all, it's the fastest Moochie has ever talked since I've been listening to the podcast. Okay, so that was <laughs> one. But he gave me like 20 questions in 20 seconds. And I'm like, oh my God, I, am I under a spotlight in a, you know, a local precinct or something? And I'm like, man. But he legit found out who I was then just from that. He, oh, yeah. he literally pinpointed me. He's like, oh, and we did. We I don't want to say we, we come fr close, but we do interact about, you know, the, the Cleveland Guardians or yeah. whatever is going on in the world. We we'd, uh, we hit up on the old Facebook every once in a while. Yeah, he, he's a very good. He's he's a good very guy. unassuming. He's a good guy. You wouldn't expect him to pick up on that stuff right away, but he is very good at it. He's very, I think he's more humble than he lets on despite his social media presence and his talk about the Browns and the Guardians. Uh, but he's a good guy. And I was kind of surprised he had that many questions prepared for you. Just knowing that he does sure. a lot of his goals the night before we record his podcast. <laughs> so. Didn't he take a shower the morning of and and actually drink that beer in the shower the morning of? You, I know I'm kidding. I, I, I'll, I'll give him I'll give him credit. It was the night before at like eleven o'clock, so that was legit. He he was supposed to do a shower beer as one of his goals. So this already tells you what our, our yeah. priorities lie. Um, and he did it at eleven o'clock on a Saturday night and gave us his resounding uh, review of how it felt. The experience was with it. So. It, but it's a great yeah, it'll, concept. It really is, Jenks, because you have Cody, and I'm not being a knock on Moochie, but you have Cody, the the continent um, family man. You know, he's going to build a a doghouse for his dog. He he's changing everything for his little boy. He's the cool guy buying you know his wife's presents. He's all in on family. You're yeah. doing. Other things that a you know a thirty year old man would do, but you also have the family aspect in it as well, and then you bring along uh, the jokester of it that just can't get his shit together, who has a family, who's trying to do the best that he can, but he's like, no, nah, I'm here and I'm just gonna get it done. <clears throat> I loved Moochie's aspect that he brings to it because for the forty year dash, you're absolutely right. Cody and I had a lot of serious things in ours. We had a lot of fun things. Mine, Dave Grohl, a lot of unachievable things at that point. But You don't know. You didn't get my present yet. I don't know. I didn't get your present yet. Um, but to that point, Moochie brings that fun to the podcast, which I really love about that. It kind of breaks the tension, breaks that, hey, we're, we're trying to be serious here. That came across as it. I can be a jokester when I want to be, but Moochie really brings that out. And a lot of us and brings the best out of us. And that's why I've been friends with him for, God, 30 years now, 26, 27 years, something like that. Uh, I, I just can't get rid of him. I tried to shake him a couple of times, but he keeps coming back. So, 
There's a few fans at that 30 year mark, bro, that I'd like to get rid of too, but they they (laughs) cling on. But he's, he's like a brother to me now. So I just, I accept it, move on. And then it's just wild watching him tell his terrible jokes to people. And I get more of a kick out of that than I think anything I have going outside of that. So it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, you guys drop every other Monday, depending, you know, if there's a holiday or something, you guys, you know, will tweak, but then that's all podcasters, but it's every other Monday that you guys drop an episode and essentially tomorrow is a new episode, right? It is. We're actually going to record tomorrow morning and then release it immediately. So uh, we'll have it out there. It'll be a little bit later than what we usually do, uh, which is less 3 a.m. drop. Obviously, we're not going to get up at 3 a.m. and record. But yeah, but we're going to have something out for Labor Day and it'll be a Cody, Cody update episode. I just updated on the last episode what I had been up to. So it's Cody's update episode. So I still have like eight weeks then. Before I have to get this Dave Roll thing out to you, <laughs> I, I'm good. Let me see. You got about four weeks. Four weeks now. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, about half that. That's good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you might get it for Christmas. You know what? I it's, I would think I'd get the Dave Grohl thing before Moochie watches The Godfather. Oh, I have to get that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because Moochie's got this episode and his next one before he's got to. Guys, I, I, I'm yeah. telling you. This is my my Tuesday morning because I drive a lot on Tuesdays, and that's when I listen to podcasts in the garbage truck. This is my first thing I turn on Tuesday morning because I never catch it live on Mondays. Not that it's live, but you know what I'm saying, the, right. the first drop. But I listen to it every Tuesday morning when I'm driving, and it's such a pickup because we all listen to podcasts, and I, I know who Jericho is, and I know who Stone Cold is, or Joe Rogan, or you know all the different podcasts everybody listens to. And it's so great having people I know from Parts Unknown. And you guys, I don't know, knew if I was listening since day one. But I it came back to 2010, 2000, 2009, 2010, 2011 when we were all together in Erie. And I'm like, man, I miss these guys. And then I was like, I want to help out. I want to help them. And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm like, you guys have to twist this, twist that, twist this. And Cody's like... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah! It leaps and bounds. Uh, you guys are doing a great job, and I love your podcast. I almost wanted to start my own like that, but I'm like, God, I can't steal my best my, my buddy's <laughs> goddamn idea and do fifty by fifty. And in fifties, I, I would have to do it the other way, ten by fifty, because <laughs> you're old. <laughs> You're, as, you're only as old as you think you are, Mark. I'm going to be inspirational here. Let's go that route. You know, you're not that old. I, what a, what, mentally, I'm five then. You remember when you saw my child <laughs> up at Erie and he oh was a youngster? God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, he's 14 and he's 28 years <laughs> older than me because I've uh, regressed. <laughs> is he taller than you by now? I feel like he's taller than you. Yes. Yeah, he is. That, that happened. My, If it makes you feel better, my niece, who was had just been born yep. when we were together at the sea wolves she is now 10 and she comes up to i believe my nose right now holy crap and she's still growing so yeah. i'm pretty sure she's going to be taller than me and i'm floating around right around six feet so she's going to be a, she's a tall girl uh, but it, it it makes you feel old i get that but mark i did want to thank you for that help you gave us early on i mean our first episode we put a disclaimer on it because it just sounded horrible <laughs> and <laughs> We were like, and when you came and helped us out, that was fantastic. And it helped us really get our groove and our foot set, feet set, wet and ready to go. Uh, but to the point of, I'm glad we're doing that for you on Tuesday mornings. It's really the goal of the podcast was trying to provide an escape or make you think of, hey, I'm with my friends or, you know, it's great not hearing about what's going on in the world because there's a lot of negativity and a lot of crap just happening in the world right now. So the ultimate goal of 40 Year Dash was, hey, come listen to us. We'll take you away from that and listen to our insanity and bullshit for an hour and a half, an hour, hour and a half, if anything. So that's I'm glad it's helping. That's essentially where we are, too, because this all started from two guys talking about wrestling on the back of a garbage truck. And we're like, people will listen to our stupidness. And over three years, people have loved, uh, you know, we've all had changes here on 
can crushers from from Paul to to John to Chad to me by myself to John to taking a different loop and um however because lives are busy and I'm never contracting people to stay but everybody's always welcome to come back I'll put it like that uh this is my yeah. baby so I can te- completely go balls deep into it <laughs> but uh yeah, th- that's what it's exactly right. You know, somebody out there is going to think, "Wow, Mark actually knows this shit." Mark doesn't know. Jenks, what time did you get the rundown uh, of what we were going to talk about today? Uh, nine thirty, I believe it was. Yeah. Nine twenty-nine. I'll give you credit. Nine twenty-nine. But it was yeah. fun because you, we messaged earlier in the week. I'll give you some credit here. You, you said, "Here's a preliminary rundown." I'm like, "Great." That's what I based all my notes off of. And then you sent me the actual rundown. I'm like, okay, I can work with this. It, it, it's not too bad. Yeah. Half, I mean, half for, an your, hour. For, your, <laughs> for your knowledge, when we do our rundown and our outline for the 40-year dash, A, Mucci never produces one. B, Cody and I are sending it about 9.45 or right before, 15 minutes before we're recording. So you're perfectly fine. I actually felt like I had time to work with it this morning. So Good. You, you have your shit together more than we do. <laughs> yeah. I literally woke up at 9.15, had a bowl of... Uh, <sighs> Damn it! It's the it's the new cereal that's going crazy out there. Magic box or magic spoon? Magic box. Thank God they're not a sponsor magic. yet. That, uh, <laughs> that everybody's telling you there's no sugars or anything like that. But uh, we're working yeah. them slowly. In the cereal is great, by the way. It's just since they're not a sponsor yet, um, be prepared to spend some money even with a promo code. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> my wife and I, we love it. But, oh, for four boxes of cereal, you have to take out a loan. So, wait, what's it called now? Magic Box? Magic, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon? Yeah. I have to look that up because I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yeah. We heard it on uh, Corey Graves and Mella's podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we are huge fans of that. And that, uh, that actually made us start thinking about something else since they have only been together a couple years well kelly and i've been together i don't know it seems like 45 years at this point um a relationship thing in kelly and i and we're going to release it here soon are going to start something like that something where kelly and i can sit and bond together and make sure we we at least have an hour or two a week because we're running where I'm doing football games, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm going to events. And so we need to etch out time for us. And we both like to talk. We both like to be the 40-year dash and essentially shit on each other about what we didn't do. <laughs> and we're doing a, a little spin on like relationship goals. And, you know, is Mark going to get laundry done this week? Uh, no, Mark did not get laundry done this week. Mark decided to drink a bottle of Maker's Mark and watch <laughs> college football. <laughs> so we're we're coming out with a podcast like that that should release in like three weeks is essentially where we're going. I so. can't wait to hear that because I think that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be do, a fantastic one. Do not take any advice and think, huh, I could change my life by listening to Mark and Kelly. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'll put that disclaimer out for the 40 year dash. We are not changing lives in our podcast. We're having fun and just trying to live our lives to the best. So, yeah, uh, that's but, a great segue because now we have to come to the sad part of the show, Jenks. Yeah. Um, everybody should live their life. Everybody should live their life the way they want to. Everybody should have a support team as we kind of just spoke about that. You know, you have Cody and Mooch and I have uh, John and, and Chad and Paul and my wife and, you know, so long and family and friends. Um Daphne passed away this week. Uh, yeah. WCW, WCW star, TNA star, Daphne Unger. And Jenks, when this happened, we essentially both shut down. Because I, mm-hmm. I we, we text each other about this. And we deep dove. And we knew we were going to not have to end up talking about her. Because there's times that I don't know a lot about the wrestlers of the past. And I let the other guys kind of chime in more of their knowledge but i knew daphne and i shut down that day and watched anything and everything about daphne and i'm like man i'm so bummed i didn't get to meet her um and it seemed like she had a great surrounding cast around her because the videos out there 
of her coming on Instagram and saying, you know, CTE issues, and we'll we'll dive into this more, but the tweets or the comments that's right next to her video, you see Ric Flair reaching out. You see Mick Foley reaching out, saying, answer your phone, we want to talk to you. Girl, we love you. Don't, don't do this, because the writing was on the wall. Plus, she cocked her Glock, essentially, right on Instagram and said, make sure you send my brain to Boston. It's Boston University, right? Is where yeah, they do all these, so. yeah, all the CTE. Yeah. Um, she she ended up taking her life, Jenks, and we'll we'll dive into some stuff. Anything that you want to bring up about her? But um, she was a military brat. Uh, a few months ago, she was actually on a podcast that I I listen to every once in a while, and I'm like, man, because they were friends on this podcast, they knew each other, but I wanted to. I wanted to reach out to Daphne, and I did. And she's like, oh, I'm not going to do anything right now. I just did this podcast, and I want to give it a little bit of time before I do another one. But reach out to me again. And it did get put on the back burner. Mm-hmm. And I and I thought, damn it, why didn't I reach out last week or something? I kind of took this to heart because when she did her, her video saying she doesn't have anybody, this, that, and the other thing, Jenks, what, what happens if I would have reached out? last weekend and said, Hey Daph, do you, can you do the podcast now? It's been like four months since you did one. Uh, I'd like to know more about your story. Talk more about your matches comparative to what you and the podcast is called talking sass with Stephanie or something like that. <clears throat> My throat is killing me today. <laughs> College football in the house. Um, yeah. So I kind of took that upon myself saying me as a podcaster, could have reached out earlier again. So I that's where my whole, I'm like, damn it, if she would have talked wrestling one more time, could that have saved her for another week or something like that? So that's why that hit me hard, and that's why I sat down and then just watched anything I could about Daphne the other day, and I'm like, because she was ahead of her time. She was way yeah. ahead of her time. So I'll let you speak a little bit, and I'll bounce back. Yeah, it it was heartbreaking to me because I mentioned this to you when we were chatting about it after it all unfolded is I saw a lot going on on Twitter. It was during dynamite last week where they were just reaching out and they were trying to get a hold of her. And it, it broke my heart because I really first started watching when I was watching TNA, it was heavy in that late 2000s era. So 2000, to 2009 was when I was deeply involved was watching 10 and 11 and all that I I thought Daphne was one of the more underrated people on that programming because it was every time she was on I was drew, drew to her she was entertaining to me I thought she was fantastic in what she did and just seeing that this had enveloped and then finding out the next day that unfortunately she had taken her life it hurt it was it was one of those things where I physically did not know what to do or how to react or how to say express condolences for that because it's it's a mental health item at that point where she had the love to support the network that was there, but sometimes the demons in your head and I think we all have them overcome what you could think or that support network or tell you that network's not there. Just from a personal level, this was, this was something that it was like, Mark, I'm not in the position of you where you have this wrestling podcast and you could have reached out and that I'm essentially a bystander, but I've grown to attach to all of these wrestlers. I mean, we could tie it back to when I, I tried for punk's return and that, but it's, it's an emotional investment you make in these performers and in these wrestlers, but it's also a sad thing because in my mind, Daphne, I didn't even think of Daphne for a while. You know, sometimes you don't even think of the person, even though at the time they had a great impact on you, you were invested, you were entertained by them. And then when this comes up, you're sitting there like, man, I wish I would have watched more, or I wish I would have done more, seen more, experienced more of this individual. But there was one video that's circling out, circulating out there. Uh, her 
daughter was added to the Empowered pay-per-view for NWA. And she was just ecstatic. She found out live on this podcast. It had Mickey James. I can't remember who else was on it. But she found out live during this interview. Um, and she was just so overwhelmed. And the joy in her face and her tears and her, it, it, made, it warmed my heart. And right. it showed that she was such a loving person, a loving individual. And just, I think it's the great memories that kind of help people move through this and cope with this type of loss. And while it doesn't bring them back, it does help to have those people that can speak well of those individuals. And, but it also goes back to the point of, you just don't know what somebody's dealing with on a daily basis, no matter how much you talk to them or how much you're involved with them in their lives. So um, that was my initial thoughts on it, Mark. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent with you. I, I do. And Daphne has been linked to CTE. She had mm -hmm. the CTE lawsuit against TNA. Again, she was doing stuff and, and I'm not disrespecting anybody on the Indies or the, the major brands right now. She was being hardcore before women yep. were even out of bra and panties matches yet on other divisions. We'll just yep. say it like that. I mean, she was going through tables, barbed wire, taking bats, taking everything. Um, she was part of that women's evolution, revolution, before it was being called that. It was just she was in a lower standard brand. And, and that was yeah. – TNA was rough then. TNA yeah. was rough. but So she took a lot. She was only 46 years old. Um. I, I don't know. I, first and foremost, as, as we're talking right now, guys, if you ever have thoughts like that, I want to get this number out because there's times, and I want to bring up CTE as well, Jenks, and talk about more towards the wrestling aspect of this as well. Uh, yeah. If you guys are having thoughts, 1-800-273-8255. Um, call. Call. It, it's not, don't be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. No. Um Last year at this time, I, I started counseling for other reasons in, in my life, um, and everybody knows now, and let me tell you, it, it helps. It's nice not, because you feel like if you're talking to your family all the time, they know what you're going through, and to me, it feels like I'm piling on them, because they have to essentially babysit me uh, with white gloves on once in a while. It's nice going to talk to somebody I don't even remember the person's name once in a while, and I'm like, "All right, this is what I did this week," and they're like, "All right, Mark, what? Why? Why do you think that was bad?" And I'm like, bah, 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 bah. "They're like, you did nothing wrong." It's nice to get that outside <sighs> release from somebody yeah. that is not really invested in your life. Yes, it's their job, but they don't want to see you die. Um, that's what yeah. this phone number does essentially, you know, there's somebody there to listen and we all see these posts that for friends, like I'd rather listen to you cry at two 30 in the morning than listen to others cry, you know, from three to seven at a funeral home, you know? Yeah. And I've changed the wording up because I can't remember the exact post, but you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so CTE Jenks, uh, played a big role in, in Daphne. And this is where the question I have, the hard hitting question I have for you. It's changed a little bit since, you know, she's been out of wrestling, but don't you think there needs to be more on I, the whole CTE issue in wrestling? And it started with Christopher Nowitzki and I'd love to reach out to him. In fact, I already did about being on the podcast and talk and talking about this, but I, I think we, as, as wrestling fans, we love the chair shots and we love stuff like that, but they need protected better because you're seeing a lot of, a lot of these. And it, it's sad that it takes Daphne this time to bring this back around because it goes to the wayside after about a month. Everybody's like, yeah, let's talk about it. No, we really need to get something going for professional wrestlers because they literally shorten their lives for us. Completely agree. And one of the trends that I'm noticing, even though a lot of it is, you know, they probably not hitting as hard as you think they are. 
just seeing different shots and different throwing into turnbuckles. I think AEW the one week had three people hit hard head first into a turnbuckle, even with the padding, that's still going to just mess with your head. And I can't imagine a thought that goes through my mind where I'm not sitting there. Like I get this is entertaining, but it crosses the line where it's too dangerous for it to continue to be entertaining. Um, it coming from a football background. So I used to play football just a couple when I was younger and a little bit in high school, you take a lot of heavy shots and you're wearing helmets and that's great and fine, but you're still taking shots to the head. You're still taking shots to your body. My, my legs, my ankles are all fucked up from that, to be honest. And seeing the CT shots, seeing any head shot, just brings shivers down my spine. It makes me kind of contract up and like, oh, that's not going to do well. That's not good. I think there needs to be more discussion. And I love what Chris Nowitzki is doing now with CTE and trying to bring awareness to that brand and just what it is and how it's affecting people's lives. I mean, I think it started, you know, he had what, eight or nine concussions? Yeah. In the span of like three years, I think it was, or even shorter time than that. And that's when he started really diving into it. Uh, in going back to, I think it was uh, Dark Side of the Ring, the Benoit episodes, where he reached out to Chris to have discussions about this right up until the unfortunate incident that happened after that. He knew at that time and wanted to bring light to it. And I think it keeps, to your point, getting pushed to the wayside for the value of entertainment, which it shouldn't. This should be in the forefront. It should be in a lot of wrestling companies up at front saying, guys, you need to stop with these headshots. You need to do something. They have to put in tighter restricted restrictions on the performers. The performers will find ways to entertain the crowd without headshots or without taking those sick bumps that look crazy good for the cameras but are extremely dangerous to the individuals themselves but i think there has to be some sort of company involvement to get the performers to understand that because if it's you or i and we're in the heat of the moment mark i can't say that i wouldn't try to do what the performers are doing at this time you oh, know what i, I mean agree. I, I would I, I would take those shots to get it over with the fans but it's almost like there has to be company involvement to protect the workers from each other um, or from themselves at that point. You brought up the football aspect of it. Uh, I was a catcher in, in high school playing baseball. And every time I see a foul ball coming back and, and blasting the umpire or the catcher in the head, uh, that's where it gives me the winces. And I'm like, oh, because yeah. I know – I've been personally diagnosed with four concussions already. And this is after uh, my high school baseball playing days or, you know, my young backyard wrestling type of days. So they were just called stingers then. Oh, just stand up and shake it off. And it was just, I don't want to say it was the, the time, but it was the times. You'll be fine to shake it off. You know, take a play off and then get back in there. Okay, or we're going to have the pitcher, you know, check on the runner at first base or do something. The manager is going to come out and talk or something for baseball oriented. Uh, There needs to be more, you know, because you've seen umpires just dropped. And me umpiring now, this year alone, I I umpired probably, I don't know, 35 games or so. I might have taken five foul balls straight off the face mask again. And it's, yeah. I drop the face mask and I go get a drink or something for a minute just to see where that's going to take me. Because I, I joke about this, that at some point Kelly's going to be pushing me in a wheelchair or something because I don't know where it's going to go. I, I know I should probably listen to my own advice and say, okay, let's do a CAT scan. Let's find out what's going on. The downfall is you don't know about the the huge CTE effectiveness and how it affects your brain until you pass away and they they do i guess the word today is deep dive uh, that i keep saying they do a deep dive into your brain to see how much is essentially been harmed or shut off 
So that's the sad part. We can we I'm gonna probably get heat for this and be prepared, Jenks, because you'll be linked to this. We got a COVID vaccine in six months. Can we not get a, a something with the brain? I mean, we have the technology out there. Is, is there not a way to deep dive into what more is processing in the brain? And I'm throwing the doctors under the bus for this. Can't we find that out earlier after one? You know, you know. Hey, this guy's yeah. had a, a high school concussion. Can can we do the testing on him to see if this is going to grow or essentially how many more can this person take? And, and I always throw in Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman came yeah. out of UCLA, well spoken, better than me at any time in my life. You hear him broadcasting now, and there's times that he forgets if it's the Cowboys, the Giants, or your Tampa Bay Buccaneers who he's broadcasting for, and that's yeah. that's all because of what he's gone through. Yeah. Well, and I think to go off of that point, Mark, the, one of the other things you have to realize is, and you brought it up, well, to an extent for another reason, but people put things off. It may not be bothering you today or it flares up once in a while, but if it goes away, I know I do. I, I have pain that comes up and then I just put it off until the next time. Then I think, oh, maybe I should have got that checked out. Yeah. But there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of that for people where my life's too busy right now. I can't get this checked out. I, I mean, it went away, so it should be fine right now. And what I've, so going back to the football days, now, if I run my hand across my head, I can feel, several either dents or something in my skull i can feel just something not there and it, it just goes back to you've taken a lot of shots to your head or you've taken a lot of injuries to your bodies but you put it off because at the point in time you're not that concerned about it until it rears its ugly head and how it does that is unfortunately dictates almost how some people are remembered and it hurts. And, you know, people need to be more cognizant of that. We need to be more proactive of the reactive, if you will. Because if you're reacting to a pain, you should probably get it checked out instead of letting it progress for years, months, years at a time before you actually get it looked at. Yeah, but the, the days of taking two Advil and then letting it ride because it'll shake off essentially by itself – Shouldn't yeah. be anymore. Yeah, and I'm not saying, you know, be a hypochondriac or anything like that. And be there for every little nook and cranny. But if you know there's a reoccurrence happening, then yeah, go get it checked out. Because it can prevent some of the unfortunate situations. And unfortunately, in Daphne's situation, maybe it would have helped prevent or at least get people more involved in her life to keep her from doing what she did to herself. Um, and that's unfortunate. And I know a lot of people are kicking themselves today about it. I know you, you mentioned it, that you yourself are like, I should have reached out one more time. I know there's a lot of people in her life that are closer to her that said, how do, how could I have done more to be there for her, to show that she was loved and that sometimes for people, they know they're loved, but the CTE and that just pushes them over the edge. And sometimes they just, it, it consumes them, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's, that's the unfortunate beast of this. That's what this beast is. It's, it messes with people's minds to the point where they're no longer themselves or they're no longer who they used to be, or they don't believe that the people that are actually there for them are actually there for them. Because to your point, and I've experienced it myself, sometimes you feel like a burden to your family or a burden to people you're closest to by laying all your problems out. I'm case one and with I withdraw, and I just, I don't say anything. I figured out myself. Unfortunately, my dog's my therapist because she can't talk, so she hears a lot of it. Poor but, Bailey. Yeah, poor Bailey. That's probably why she's exhausted most times from fighting blankets. But uh, but that's but that's how it sometimes it goes. It's people just withdraw from society because they don't want to be a burden. And 
everyone needs to understand that you're not a burden to the people that love you. That's that's case one. If people love you and are in your life, they're there for a reason to support and be there for you to continue forward with. Yeah, uh, Jenks, thanks. That 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 was a great discussion over CTE and, and Daphne. We raise our glasses right now to Daphne. Rest in peace. Rest easy. Um, you, you will be missed. Uh, I know, speaking from the heart, these two guys on this week's Can't Crush Your Show, um, hugely affected by it as literally we text each other right off the bat, knowing that we were going to bring this up this week, and we're like, holy shit. This is crazy. But again, that number, guys, suicide prevention number, 1-800-273-8255. Call them if you're having any thoughts oh, or just want to talk. It doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be that, you know, you feel suicidal. But if there's mm-hmm. that time that you, the Jenkson, there's that time that I'm like you, I shut down. And possibly yeah. I should, I've never felt suicidal, but maybe I should call. But I have my therapist. Yeah. So... All right, let's take a quick break. Let me do my collar and elbow shtick, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll go over hot topics because I know there's one that's right on the tip of your tongue that you want to talk about, and then we'll give our predictions for tonight's AEW All Out pay per view. Which uh, sidebar, Jenks, I cannot fucking wait for tonight because this is the biggest pay per view in a long time for me. Same boat, same fucking boat. Collar and Elbow, hats, hoodies, tees, sweats, all that great stuff over at CollarNelbow.com. Al Snow, the new fall line is coming out. I've seen some of the releases. I'm not allowed to talk about them yet, but they're sweet. And that's not a that's not a hint of what's coming up. I'm just saying as an idiot, they're really awesome. So go over to CollarNelbow.com, and when you're done uh, doing all your ordering everything, type in Can Crushers in the promo code. That's... Can Crushers, all one word, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. You'll get 10% off from your order, and you'll help out the show as well. All right, Jenks and I are going to take a quick break. You're going to hear from Al Snow and a little teaser of uh, some of the stories that we're going to have or shout-outs from some of the people that call into our new number that we have. I'll give you that at the end of the show. Don't worry. So here comes Al Snow. Here comes a shout out. Jenks and I come back. We'll be talking about the week in wrestling and then giving our full fledged predictions about what's going on tonight on all out wrestling, a love and a passion. We all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand a brand founded on the aspects of wrestling two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere collar and elbow is the brand passion and love for wrestling is the drive I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hey, what a time to be a wrestling fan. It's me, a familiar voice. Not going to say any names. Keep it anonymous. CM Punk's back. The man's back. And with my long hair, you know I love ponytail Brock, but keep listening to Can Crushers, keep watching wrestling, and Dime Peace, call me. And welcome back to Can Crushers. This is the week in wrestling. That's how I'm going to bring it back this week, because I was going to stutter again. So welcome (laughs) to uh, the deep dive shit show of Mark and Jenks this week. Uh, If you're just tuning in halfway through the show, I don't understand how you would do that. Michael Jenks is the one of the three co-hosts of the 40 Year Dash podcast, longtime friend from the Howlers up in Erie, Pennsylvania. He doesn't live in Erie, though. He lives in parts unknown. Jenks. I know there's one thing, because again, you knew you were coming on this show to talk wrestling this week, and I know there's one thing that you cannot wait to talk about, and it happened early on in the week, so go ahead. 
Yeah, and I need to know what the hell is going on because Nia or Charlotte just got downright and dirty on Raw. And I've been seeing Meltzer saying it's a work shoot, but that suplex drop from Nia to Charlotte did not look like a work shoot. That looked very dangerous, and it just turned into an all-out fist fight. And I guess they're fighting tomorrow night, too, which I don't know how that's happening. But I, I don't know. To me, that was a hell of a shoot, try to fight each other, take each other down type moment on Raw. Maybe I'm overthinking it, and maybe I've bought it hook, line, and sinker. But that was the one thing I wanted to bring up. And I wanted to get your thoughts on it, Mark, because I just thought, holy shit, they're trying to actually take each other out at this point, or at least box each other in the fucking ring. But what were your <laughs> thoughts on that? Well, let me put a, a caveat on all this. Uh, as we were getting ready to watch Raw, and that's a lie, tape Raw, because I watch Raw on <laughs> Tuesdays, um, an hour before, or two hours before, I'm always on the internet, and I saw that, I don't know if it was Meltzer or one of the other higher-up ones said, Vince McMahon has tossed away the script for Raw, and he's writing a new one within two hours. Because there was supposed to be a couple matches from the week before. They said, yeah. there, you know, Miz and Morrison were supposed to take place, and Alexa was supposed to fight, and da, da, da. Like, all that yep. got scrapped. And now yeah. they're just kind of, like, essentially shit-showing matches together. And I think that's Raw in general. But then they put yeah. this match together of... Charlotte and Nia. I do not think it's a work. I completely think it's a shoot because I think it started early in the match. I think the paintbrush from Charlotte to Nia was very stiff. And yeah. Nia took it and was like, no fucking way, bitch. Are you going to do that to me? And, and, and now in a, in a real fight, you know, because we'll pull this. I I think Nia would just decimate Charlotte, and there's no disrespect oh, there. Yeah. But yeah. a bigger person, we've seen what you physically did to Becky Lynch, exploded her face. Charlotte has had, it's out there, plastic surgery and stuff done now that she doesn't want that pretty face being hit. And I, I don't think Nia's going to give two shits. She's going to take it to where she takes it. Um... On a side note, though, Nia is still not... She's she's a great athlete. I couldn't do what she does or anything mm. like that. I think she's just very unsafe with her uh, partners in the ring. Have it be a tag team match or this one-on-one. -on -one. And I think that after she got dropped a few times, even prior to that suplex, I think Charlotte thought... No, bitch, you ain't getting me out of the ring for 90 days or so because I'm hurt. So Charlotte kind of got a little bit stiff, too. And it was so awkward because when they tussled right next to the ropes and then yep. Nia kind of turned, they got back to their spot of Nia's knee needed to be taken out. Because then you notice once after the knee was taken out, the match ended within 45 seconds. Boom, boom, oh, boom. Yeah. Just get that. But... That two-minute period, that was awkward, first off. It was really awkward. I think it was a legit shoot on each other, and I want to know where this goes from here. It, it, like you said, if it's a storyline, they got me. But I don't think it was a storyline whatsoever, because that just looked too awkward to be a storyline. Well, even when Charlotte's head bounced off the ropes in that one exchange during that whole time i think they had to turn it into some sort of storyline after this whole incident yeah because you could just tell that they were physically trying to stop each other from actually knocking each other out there was one point where they were holding each other's arms like you would see in a fight just trying to prevent the landing blow i, I don't know where this goes but i think it can only be a storyline after this and if melcher's hearing or whoever reported it uh, is reporting a work shoot. I feel like that was a cover up after the fact. No, I, I yeah. feel like they. I feel like that was somebody saying, "Oh no, it was work. It was supposed to happen." Because th there was no way that was supposed to happen. I could tell that that was going to turn into an actual fight at some point if they didn't stop it quick. So well, I don't know how. I don't know how this Monday goes. The announcers. 
me being the communication guys, I watched the match, but I also listened to the announcers ramble about nothing once in a while. Yeah. They paused. Go mm-hmm. back and watch this. They paused. They're like, and and they don't pause usually for that 15, 30 seconds or whatever. They're, they just didn't know what the hell was going on either. So, yes, now it gets turned into a storyline. I completely yeah. agree with that. And it might be able to drag us right into it, but that five minutes of that match, that was hatred. Pure there was, hatred. Yeah, and I'll be interesting to see where this goes along with you. What's kind of scary to me, and that's really scary, is if they're turning this into a storyline, there's a pay-per-view called Extreme Rules in about, what, three weeks, two weeks? Three, yeah. That they could, they could drag this right up until, and then have an Extreme Rules match, which I don't even know what we would see in that point. And so I, I don't know what's happening here, but I'm going to be interested and heavily invested right now just to see how this goes forward. Is, but, is there anything else on this week's Raw that, <laughs> that made – let's do some bitching about this week's Raw because I haven't in a while. I hate what they yeah. did with Karrion Cross. I hate his whole oh my God. SMS uh, demolition guy. He that, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw the first iteration of this. Is, is this demolition reborn? And are they going to change his name to, like, I don't know, what they had Axe, Smash, and Crush. Crush. Uh, I couldn't even think of what they were trying to name him, Fletch, or I don't know what they would try to do with him. But what the hell are they doing to Karrion Cross? Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if you were a fan of him before. I loved him. He had the greatest yeah. entrance in wrestling, period, especially when that crazy-ass Scarlet came out. And that's half his uh, gimmick. He lost that's Scarlet. Half- it, that's exactly it. That was his whole mystique. Charlotte was almost like I reckoned it to they referencing the Doomsday. He was Doomsday coming. It was almost like Charlotte was the herald announcing Doomsday is coming for you. And I don't know why they took that away from him, took her away from him. I don't know what's going on there, but I feel like that took an element out of Karrion Cross, and now they keep just watering him down every week to where. I'm not invested as much as I used to be. I think he could still be a killer in the ring, but they have watered him down. And I don't know what, why, what the point of that was. The the loss to Jeff Hardy is him being NXT champion. Yeah. Watered everything down for Karrion Cross. Well, and I think not only Karrion Cross, but it did damage to the NXT brand, which I'm guessing maybe Vince wanted to do at that point. We'll get on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can get onto that horse too, but... I want to I want to bring up yeah. one more thing. Is I was never about Raw. I'm talking. Um, I was never been a huge 24 seven champ type of guy. Uh, yeah. Maybe r Truth and Carmella was my favorite rendition of them running around, and it was probably because Carmella. But what they're doing now with it, these vignettes of Reginald chasing after a tree in a garbage can, it's something that I produced in high school. Yeah, it's kind of taken a step back. I mean, with with Truth when he had it and Carmella, it kind of felt original and it was kind of funny. But this Reginald stuff, I'm not, I'm not invested in. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't like it at all. What was this past week? Was what? Tazawar was dressed as a dog. Yeah, and they were on a bridge. That was yeah, that was that was disappointing, and I don't know why they're producing those vignettes in that manner i get the 24 7 titles supposed to be almost a joke type title but come on i think somebody you could think a little bit harder about how you do that and present the title but deep dive why am i stuck on deep dive this week God, i don't know i don't understand <laughs> uh moving along um nxt uh we've seen the new logo we've heard that yeah. now vince and pritchard are going to be more involved in it uh, essentially being a NXT developmental brand, a WWE developmental brand comparative to being the third brand, which was actually the first brand if true wrestling fans loved it. Yeah. This is my question for you. Are they trying to create their own original stars anymore? Because you've seen that there's really not a star on Raw. Uh, SmackDown has Roman, who you can hate him, but he's legit a star. 
SmackDown yeah. has the roster. If you're going to look at a roster and say, man, one-to-one, you take the SmackDown roster. You can shift some yeah. people over and make it stronger, but then nobody would watch Raw. But is NXT going to try to create their own WWE stars anymore and not pull people from the indies? Say, like uh, local wrestlers, Bill Collier from IWC, or maybe an Andrew Palace, or, you know, something around this area that everybody knows, or, you know, others from all over, Hammerstone from MLW. Are they saying, screw the indies, and we're just creating our own stars from here on out? I feel like that's their path forward right now. Um, you know, and I saw, even though this is not creating their own star for the most part, but I saw they potentially have signed Gable Stevenson from the Olympic, the Olympic gold medalist to a contract at some point. But I, it feels like they want to just revert back to building their own stars and building them up. Because if you think about it, 2014, 2015, yeah, they had Sami Zayn, they had Kevin Owens, they had Neville come in they were really building let's let's go back to they were building the women's division at that point yeah. and they were doing a lot of building stars and getting them to the point of where they needed to be so they could get called up so i feel like it's more of a revert back to that point so they can feed raw and smackdown with those bigger stars or at least raw because to your point smackdown is loaded right now smackdown is the show and maybe that's because it's on Fox and they need to have those better storylines and the better draw with it. But I feel like they've just reverted back to the early NXT days where they're building up those individuals. And to your point, they're probably going to start staying away from the heavy hitters of the indie scene. Because why take them when we can build somebody in our own image and have them run our shows? Because so that's what they did with Roman, uh, Seth to an extent, Charlotte, Sasha. I mean, that's, that's Becky Bailey. Yeah. Becky Bailey. They built them from where they were. They had a great foundation to start, but they built them up to what they wanted. And now they're running the shows, uh, which is crazy to say, because in 2015, I don't think I would ever said that at some point, especially around the women's division, but they are running the show and oh. they're must have. So I, I think they have reverted back to that sense of the branding. So let me give you one more question about NXT, uh, again, because I didn't watch it, because I didn't tape anything, because my whole cable company issue this week. <laughs> um, there's a lot of huge names down there right now. Does that mean yeah. they're being brought up? And I'm going to say Kyle O'Reilly, Ciampa, Gargano, uh, the, the Loomis, and you know some women. I, I love Indy Hartwell. You, you see yeah. Shotzi and Tegan Knox get brought up, but those huge men's names that are out there, you saw the release of Bronson Reed recently. Do we mm -hmm. get more releases of those huge stars? Because where does Ciampa fit in or Gargano? They've both been up on the upper rosters before, but they just were tweaked by Vince and they didn't go over. As much as the yeah. indie people love who they are, the main brand that doesn't watch indie, they only watch WWE, didn't get Ciampa, didn't get Gargano. Do they get released? Yeah. Because they got big money. And Kyle O'Reilly, yeah. nothing against him. He can work in the ring, but shit, he sounds like Moochie talking. <laughs> That's fair. But see, I don't think they get released because I think you have to have at least somewhat of that name brand individuals on NXT to build up those new superstars or those new, uh, yeah, superstars, which would be perfect terminology because I think you have to have them defeat one of these bigger name brands. I mean, Joe's down there now. So they're giving legitimacy to the brand to the extent of building the new talent in the brand. Rich Holland's probably going to become a super mega star at some point. I hope I so. feel like he, I, I think he's fantastic. I think he's over. I think he can do the work. Pete Dunn, I think is going to get called up at some point because he, he's just fantastic. And I love everything that Pete Dunn does, but I think you still have those core Champa, uh, Thatcher, Gargano, Riley there to help build up those stars so that when if the plan is to use NXT to develop those stars, which it sounds like it is, you have the veterans there to help guide them along and get them to that higher platform. So they're ready for the Raws, for the SmackDowns and that 
Because if you remember, Gargano and Champa were a big part of some of the teams and some of the individuals actually getting to the main roster previously. So, the, so are you essentially saying they're? Uh, I, I I can't even throw a baseball reference in since we worked <laughs> in baseball. Uh, they're lifer triple A players then. As much as I hate saying that, I think that's what WWE has relegated them to. But I think it's because they have a big enough role on the product that it might not hurt them too bad in the long run. Or they are fine with being there. I think they are fantastic talent. I think they could be world champion at their own aspects. But I think you're right. I think they are the AAA, the legitimate AAA lifetimers at this point. Because WWE has put that restriction on them. Right. Uh, one more thing with NXT. What do you actually think about the logo? I don't hate the logo. I'm questioning why they changed the logo, but I don't hate it more or less. I think it's a shifting in the brand. I think right now it's a shift away from what is past. They had to go a different route. If they were going to rebrand this as the developmental brand, they had to shift away from the gold and black. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not over the top about it, but I also don't hate it. So I, I, I get why they rebranded. I, I might be a step above you. It's not that I yeah. am getting it tattooed on my arm or anything <laughs> like that, but I, I don't think it's bad. I, I, I like, and I, I know where they're going. They're, they're being kind of PC, all exclusive. There's all the colors, um, stuff like that. And I'm all for that. Uh, we need to, it's 2021. Christ, it's almost yeah. 2022 as fast as this goddamn year is going. But yeah, right. uh, essentially, cool. If that's going to be your, hey, we're all in with, and I'm not one to speak because I don't know all the right words, but non-binary, all, all of that. If that's going to be your representation saying this is what we're doing, cool. I yeah. like it. Yeah. But people are like, this is fucking horrible. No, it. Oh. And, if, and if a logo is going to piss you off, I think you need to move along outside of wrestling. I think you need to grow at that. You need to grow up at that point because the logo is not bad at all. I'm all for bright colors. I will wear pink whenever I want. Yes. Thank you. Go out in public. I don't care. I, I mean, I love, I like the design and all that. I get why they're shifting away from it. I, I think it's just the shifting of the brand and just an identity shift at that point. But to your point, I'm not getting a tattoo, but I do like it. I like it a lot. Uh, but I if can't, anybody's really concerned about a logo, then they need to get bigger priorities in their life too. But that's my hot take. <laughs> I, I can't wait till we actually get together. And I think it's going to start calming down a little bit. And I think we should at least – baseball is going to be over. But at least I should make the trek up to Erie to see you guys. And Max is saying, yes, we should go to Erie as well. <laughs> um, to go to the Cornerstone or a bar up there uh, so you can actually see – uh, my logo arm that is coming to fruition with uh, all the stickers of wrestling logos that I have on my arm. I, I've been dying to see this. Yeah. I go <laughs> I go again Tuesday for uh, another one. Actually, oh. she does one in full and then starts the next one. So I'm, I'm really pumped. And I can't – I can release what I'm going to get because, Christ, nobody's going to see them. But I am getting a uh, – a Chelsea Green, because I'm going to be meeting her wow. here soon. And then uh, let me just say I'm going to the dentist as well. <laughs> uh, the DMD, huh? Yeah. That, that makes sense. That's a personal one because, like, I know. I always say this. Like, I legit know her. I called after realizing this in, in wrestling and everything. I called her high school fucking basketball games. When really? she's she's originally from Punxsutawney, and if you okay. guys don't know who we're talking yeah. about, it's Britt Baker. Um, yeah, she's originally from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, where the whole stupid groundhog thing happens. And if if she does, <laughs> she does listen once in a while. So if she listens to this, she's gonna get on my ass. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I called some of her high school basketball games and stuff, and then you know she went on to college and everything. She came back around, and I have mutual friends that know her. And we just started talking, and one of the kids that I went back to college with the second time around, she's like, you know Brit, you call basketball games. So I'm like, no. Well, I deep dove into some of my old stats, and sure as shit, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, let me ask you this. Does that make you feel old or not? 
extremely <laughs> old. <laughs> but you guys back in Erie were already calling me grandpa. Yeah, that's true. I you mean, know, you, you had Cody as pa, and then I was grandpa. So. Yeah, that's that, that's accurate. I mean, you're ten years older than us. We had to call you something, right? <laughs> All right, we're on the <laughs> AEW. Do you have any other hot takes? Did you watch SmackDown? Is any did I miss anything? The uh, SmackDown wise, the only hot take I have, and I heard Jared. I'm going back to Becky and Bianca. I think they had a phenomenal promo on SmackDown. Back and forth. I love Becky just saying no. I wanted you to know this because I know your take on it. I know it's a majority take, so this is my hot take probably for the week. I did not mind SummerSlam the way that went down. Really? Six seconds. Yeah. Did not mind it. My thought on this, and you alluded to it in the when you reviewed SummerSlam, Bianca was not prepared for Becky. If I'm thinking of this as a logical person, even though I know Bianca could probably squat and destroy Becky because <laughs> she's a very strong woman. She is. Um, but if you're thinking about this logically, if I'm Bianca Belair, I prepared for Sasha Banks. Okay, well, Sasha's not there, so then Carmella comes out. Not what I prepared for, but I know Carmella, I'm familiar with her. However, Becky Lynch comes out, and I'm now fighting Becky Lynch. I'm not prepared for that. I have no idea what Becky Lynch has been training on doing or anything for the past year and a half since she's had her child. I have no idea what Becky Lynch represents or anything along those lines. I could see the 26 seconds she got caught. She got full. She got a little bit too confident about it, walked right into it and lost in 26 seconds. If I think it was caveat and it seems like they're playing into it, as long as they said Bianca wasn't prepared for Becky, that Bianca realizes she wasn't prepared for Becky. I think they're starting to play into that a little bit more. And now Becky's trying to hide from her, but I didn't mind it one bit. I think as long as they do this storyline, right. I think they're in a good place with it. I don't think it hurt Bianca at all. Okay, all right. I I like that little I like that little spin. Plus, we know that uh, it's out there now that Becky Lynch is essentially going to be a heel, as yeah. much of a heel as she can be, because she's Britt Baker is also a heel, and everybody loves her. You know, oh, I, yeah, those sure. two are the, and I'm going to say both of them are the Stone Cold. Stone Cold was a yeah. heel three fourths of his career. Yep, but you wouldn't be able to tell because he got the loudest pops. Uh, every time, every time he walked out, I mean, they had to make the change for the face. And well, let's even go back, Mark. When Becky first started as a heel, when she turned on Charlotte to become the man, they had to change it in three weeks because there's no way the crowd was buying into her being a heel. Right. They just cheered for her. I'm not saying that's going to happen with Britt or Becky, but I think the respect is there and they're going to love them as a heel. No matter what they do. People just love a good heel. And Becky and Brett, I think, both kill it as a heel. Or for, in Becky's case, couldn't kill it as a heel. So I, I, I think they're on the right path here with it. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. And, and no disrespect to Bianca as well. Yeah, um, I, no, it, none. it was the right thing to do to get Becky the title back because, holy hell, CM Punk just arrived. And let's go to AEW because yep. um, Jenks. I cried that night. I was that guy. Not, I just wasn't exposed as much as he was. Uh, and my wife was like, you crying? I'm like, yeah, I am. That was my first wrestling tattoo I got with CM Punk. Yeah, I cried. I cried as well. And I can say for my co-host of the four-year dash, Cody, he got emotional as well. And his wife asked him a similar question to what, you're, what Kelly asked you. It was, why are you so emotional? He, trying to get that out of him. He's like, you don't understand. She had just started watch. She watched. She began watching WWE a month after starting dating Cody. So she never understood that because they started, to give preference to that, they started dating. They really became boyfriend and girlfriend in February of 2014. No punk, punk era. The Rumble. Yeah. No punk era. It was just after the punk era. So... She didn't understand that. And just to see him back, it was emotions. It was a smile on my face watching him interact. He got emotional. It was fantastic. And he, and he still does, which is even greater to me, is that he's still involved and just happy as can be being back. Yeah. 
So before we start doing our predictions for AEW, um, do you have any hot takes? Well, first off, let me just say that the FTR Santana Ortiz match was to me the match of the week. I oh. went apeshit crazy over this match, and I'm glad actually that Santana Ortiz got the got the rub. I think they need to be the upper tag team in AEW for a while because the crowd is so behind them. I really yeah. do. And I think it's going to all, I'm going to bring this to the prediction part of it. I think this all works into that of they are climbing and they are going to be the ones running the division soon. Yeah. I, I have to agree with you on all aspects of that. FTR Santana, or Santana Ortiz was phenomenal. That was the best. That great. That oh God, one of the better matches I've seen in the month. Yeah, if I'm going that. Yeah, if way. we're going that far, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go that far because I FTR in its own right is just magic as a tag team. Kiss fluid, beautiful work. I love them. I love a lot of their work. Santana and Ortiz, though, they are top notch, and they will step up their game to anybody. And I think. You know, I hadn't thought about that until you just said what you said, Mark. And now thinking back on it, I think I agree. I don't know where you're going totally, but if it's going where I think it's going for your predictions, I am in full agreement with that. Because now it just makes sense logically for that. But that was, I wanted to, I was going to actually bring that up as one of my talking points. Because that match in its own right had to be acknowledged oh, as yeah. one of the better matches. Otherwise, I think both AEW shows, the, after after the opening match, both AEW shows were generically go-home shows for pumping up a pay-per-view. I mean, you got Orange Cassidy against Jack Evans. I didn't care. Both yeah. MJF and Jericho spoke, which they both speak great, but they got their talking points. I'm um, over the whole cage and Team Taz feud. Like, there needs to be a blow-off of this. Did so let me ask you this, and I don't know if this is just in my mind, but am I missing something with Brian Cage? Because I feel like every time I watch him, I'm not blown away totally, and I don't know if it's the Taz feud that's kind of restricting what he, the potential he has. But I wanted to throw that out there because that was one of the things I highlighted. It is. Uh, no disrespect to the Taz crew. They're all yeah. young. So he's kind of mm -hmm. leading the way with them and letting them get their spots off. He came to an IWC show one time and worked. I, I think he needs to work with the bigger guys. I really do. He can do some phenomenal stuff, but he's a bigger yeah. guy and he's working down to their fast speed motions and everything. You put him in the ring with Luchasaurus on that division or Wardlow or somebody like that, you get that big match of, you know, Stud Bundy, uh, Stud Andre, the stuff that, you know, big yeah. guys should be doing. And, I, you know, I just don't think Cage, he needs it. And that's why I'm saying he needs to get over this feud and move along. Plus, the FTW title isn't doing anything for anybody right now. That was cool yeah. in ECW. It's not cool anymore. Yeah, and I think you saw a hint of that with the with the Hobbs match. I think Hobbs could be potentially good. And you're this week I did see a little bit of Cage where I'm like, okay, that's a little bit better because Hobbs is a powerhouse. But to your point, he's playing down some guys that are a little bit more greener, not more as experienced. So maybe once he starts getting up, I'm not I'm not saying I hate Brian Cage at all. I think I just need to see more of him to understand it because I knew he was an Impact TNA for a while there, and I saw a couple of his matches there. Uh, but I'm just waiting for him to blow me away at some point. And maybe I'm putting too much on him. I don't know. Or I have high standards. That could be too. High standards. Uh, <laughs> he was in the TNA Impact era when it was on not even Access. It was on your local PBS station. Yeah. And yeah. Nobody but Ontario, Canada got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fact. So <laughs> otherwise, like I said, I, I watched rampage this morning literally before well no, i didn't watch it so i watched it late last night after football um eh, it was all right i love what they're doing yeah. with malachi black i really do i i love that malachi kept his beaten up eye through this whole thing i think that was since he lost an eye in wwe he's just keeping that now but uh <laughs> i i i love that i i like what they're doing with malachi i want to see where he goes Further. Is he going to be a big time player? I'm hoping he is. I think that he should be. 
Uh, and obviously him working with Cody and the nightmare family is going to be that step in that right direction. But I want to see more out of them. I want to see longer matches because I used to enjoy Malachi Alistair black matches in NXT to the live long day. I, I mean, they were just fantastic to me. So I want to see more out of them. I can't wait to see more. Yeah. His it's main developed. roster stuff was not good. No, not at no all. disrespect to him. It's just, they, they, no, just, no. they didn't know what to do with them. Yeah, they booked them into a corner like they do a lot of people. So that just, it doesn't help anybody. Um, but can I go back real quick? Yeah, to AEW you Dynamite? can go back to wherever you want to. What I, I just want to know, what what the gun club turning on Paul White, I don't know what, what purpose this serves in the long run. Are they going to feud? What's going to happen here? Because I, I just felt like that was an add-on. It was just something that didn't need to happen at this point in time. So I don't know if they're going to say Gun Club's running out to help QT tonight or what, but that just seemed odd to me. My thoughts are, why doesn't, why didn't they make the save this week? Okay, Wednesday night. Yeah. And then, you know, everybody gets involved in QT and big shows, or and I still can't call him Paul White. Um, I, I just, he's been big show for thirty years. Um, yeah. But for Paul White, everybody gets in the ring from QT's side, and then the gun club comes out, and then you turn on them during the pay-per-view, which sets up more of a feud for them, or, hey, I want to fight Billy Gunn, or, you know, something like that. QT wasn't around. Like, they didn't do anything until he got his ass beat. I... And I thought he wasn't going to be wrestling a lot. I thought it was like a twice a year type of thing. If you're going to get him against Billy Gunn, I sure as shit don't want to see that on another pay-per-view. I'm not excited no. for the QT Paul White match, in fact. <laughs> I'm not either. I, that might be the bathroom break of the night. But, yeah, I just didn't, it didn't make sense logically. And to your point, if they would have did that at the pay-per-view, maybe, it might have made more sense or it would have sparked interest i just think this was this was weird timing to have this turn happen and it to be even considered a turn because i don't think they had been doing much with each other to begin with unless there's things happening on AEW dark which i i haven't watched in a while but yeah i just thought that was odd timing on that one so i have no idea why that was happening all right let's do our predictions for the pay-per-view then i will let you run because (laughs) Remember, I was like, I won't keep you that long. But this has been great. Jenks, you can join me it. anytime you want to because this has been an enthralling episode. I've enjoyed it. All right, let's see. I have it pulled up on the old wiki here. And there's a 10 man tag match. It's the best friends in Luchasaurus team against uh, the Hardy family office, which is the worst, worst, worst name of a faction ever. Yeah. Um, I hope that's the buy-in show because they, they were going to have the women's battle Royal is the buy-in show, but <clears throat> the Malachi black and who is he going to fight? Pac match is not happening now. Uh, oh, there, there's travel issues. I, Pac went back to the United Kingdom and he can't get back home. I was looking forward to that. I was still Andrade. And no, Andrade. Yeah, now, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking forward to that match, and then I saw the travel issues. I'm like, what? What the hell? Why do they let him go home? So, and I know that's mean for me to say, but why do they let him go <laughs> home so much? Because he's gone for months. Then. Yeah, yeah. Because he's when the last time he ran into this, he was gone for almost a year at that yeah. point buy a fucking yeah. house in the united states if you know you're gonna tape for like three weeks <laughs> Jesus. exactly uh, but i i can't i can't shit on a man if he wants to go home and see his family no i know but i at agree the, at the same time i was looking so forward to that match but it is what it is but yeah i don't that one i up in the air i think that's gonna end up being best friends and jurassic express winning that one but i, I don't know this is not too invested in it. I'm not invested in it at all. Like I said, I hope it's on the buy-in. And this is going to be one of those match janks. You've listened to the podcast a lot. Um, this yeah. is going to be one of those crazy everybody in the ring diving this, that, and the other yep. thing. It's it's not that I don't like Jungle Boy. He just can't do it every match. 
in that in with private party in the hybrid that's that's this match is not going to be a 44 year old man i'll leave it at that yeah yep fair enough um and then we have the 21 woman casino battle royal which i really love their spin on kind of like a royal rumble um everybody's not announced yet so i won't even say but do you have somebody who you think is one going to make a big surprise tonight and then i want you to kind of give us it doesn't have to be a winner but you know somebody that you have on your thoughts of winning this and being the number one contender for brit then yeah big surprise i don't know if i have a big surprise i don't want to say well 90 days is up for lana but i think she's showing up in tnt title spoilers um but i think big surprise rise i could see chelsea green stepping in because damn it they have that contract that was gonna be mine (laughs) i i just i think it's chelsea green is going to be the big surprise entrant coming into that uh the person to win it i feel like it's going to be thunder rosa some i think they're going to set up another brit versus thunder rosa spoilers on my next pick or on the women's title pick but I think they're just going to come back to Thunder Rosa for a spread at some point. So I'm thinking it's Thunder Rosa going to take this thing. But well, I have two big surprises, and one is okay. actually, one is actually the winner. Oh, one was going to be Chelsea. One was going to be Chelsea Green. It's not going to be Bailey, but it, <laughs> as much as she wants to be in the match, she's, she's going to argue that point though. Okay. Um, one of my surprises is going to be Chelsea Green. But the other surprise is going to be somebody else that Britt has worked with a ton on the um, independent circuit. It's going to be Deanna Parasa. Deanna's going to win, uh, setting up a title versus title match at some point. And then one of those big super shows where no title actually changes hands. Something happens, and then maybe you get your Thunder Rosa match again essentially down the line. I, I agree that the Thunder and Brit's going to happen. So that spoils the Britt Baker, Chris Statlander match. So we really don't have to talk about it, but um, yeah, Britt's winning that. And then you're going to get something in, in that form. I think I'm very disappointed. I didn't even think of Deanna. I thought, Oh man, now I'm, now I'm upset. It doesn't change my pick, but I I'm kind of upset. I didn't even think of that. So that's a good, that's a good call out. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be have your your thumb on the on the wrestling scene, Jenks. You have yeah, to know. I get, I got to step up my game, you know. So I show you're going to be back every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This oh, will I'm get you back in. Back. It. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, Moxley against Kojima. I I'm picking Moxley. I I've not seen a lot of Kojima stuff. I've heard a lot of great things about him, but I I can't see Moxley being beat by Kojima on a AEW pay per view. Something happened last night, and I posted it right before we started recording this. Uh, Moxley won the GCW title back. I did see that, yep. So I think we have two surprises. I think this is the night of surprises. I think there's going to be a a lot of craziness. Um, Are you you thinking Cordona's going to show up? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I am. Um, they did the Nick Gage thing. Yeah. Or he could come back because you're going to eat that Moxley Nick Gage feud is there. Build in all the time. So one of the two. But I think it's yeah. more going to be if if Chelsea comes out for the 21 woman battle royal, uh, Cardone is there as well because they're actually traveling yeah. together this weekend. That makes sense. I guess my thought on that would be, I don't know if Cardona gets involved in the Kojima match, and maybe I'm just being naive about it, but I think that an attack afterwards yeah, should well, be yeah. more warranted. Yeah. Well, I think it's a quick, I don't want to say quick match, maybe five, seven minute match between Moxley and Kojima, just to mm-hmm. essentially, and I hate to say it like this, get it out of the way. But right. uh, I think with him, you know, parading around, leaving to Wild Thing, you have one of the two, Cardona or Gage, come out and beat the snot out of Moxley because Eddie's not going to be out there with him because he's going to be worrying about his match. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, yeah. Do we jump into Eddie's match? Because We can jump right into Eddie's match. If I'm looking at this on paper, I think it's going to be a fun match. I do but too. But I don't, I don't see Eddie in past Miro. 
Um, I, I think Lana CJ is going to be in Miro's corner at some point in TNT. And I think it happens tonight because 90 days, I think was Wednesday uh, for her. So I think, I think Miro just beats Eddie. Uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be close, but I think it'll be a good entertaining match. I agree. Uh no disrespect to Eddie. I, I think he's at that level with the AEW fans that a title doesn't mean anything to him. He's somebody that yeah. just he he's going to have somebody's back. He's going to beat the snot out of everybody. Taking a loss to Miro doesn't hurt him because he's got mm-hmm. so many other feuds in his freaking barrel right now that, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Eddie's too good, and he's one of those veteran guys that everybody loves and – Title does him no good, to your point, but I think he's a veteran guy people love. So losing the Miro just helps Miro out in the long run. So we'll jump to the Paul White and Q2 Marshall match. Um, I probably will not have a lot of stake in this match. Yeah, I'm not. A, as reference to my bathroom break match, uh, I, I guess the gun club could get involved. I think White wins, beats QT. I don't know if they put QT over. I'm Paul White, but that's kind of where my thoughts are right now. We'll bounce to, we mentioned it, uh, we're both taking Brit, so nothing, uh, Statlander's great, I do love her, but I I love she's not ready yet. No, I I love Statlander, I think Rebel and Hater is just going to be too much, they're going to be a distraction, it's going, that's how it's going to end, and Brit's going to win this match. All right. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the main event, but it's not the main event for me, so we're going to go right to it. Omega and Christian Cage, because the other three matches actually have something big going on in them. So um, Omega and Christian Cage, uh, I'm going right off the bat. No disrespect, Christian, but Omega is going to keep this because you're not. No, you have one title already. We're not going to have dual champions again. And I will be pissed if it's not Hangman Page, it takes the goddamn title <laughs> off of Omega. I completely agree because I feel like they built it for Hangman Page to do it. And I, there's just – Cage already got his win. He got the Impact World title off of Omega. Callus and the Elite's going to get involved somehow. And, yeah, Christian Cage has no chance, but it should be entertaining nonetheless. I don't think you see Hangman because, spoiler, his – um wife is having a baby or you know is very ready due that's why he's not on the card for this at all um yeah he asked for the time off because her pregnancy due date is around this time so that makes perfect sense yeah and yeah it'll happen eventually possibly in november possibly All right, let's go to the tag team match it's inside the cage it's the young bucks against the lucha brothers for the championship um i essentially gave away what i thought was going to happen but what do you think uh i think it's the young bucks and i think the elite finds a way into that cage i i going back to what you said earlier there's another team on the horizon for the young bucks now that you said that that i i didn't know who it was until you said it mark so I think the Young Bucks escape the cage with the title. It's going to be a lot of flippy flippy and a lot of uh, dangerous moves going to happen, though. I will predict that. See, I think this is setting up for a a longer feud. Uh, you, my thoughts are that the Lucha Brothers win this. Okay, Uh-oh, they okay. become the tag team champions. They end up then in maybe like a week or two having that title defense against Santana Ortiz and that's when the Bucks show up cost the Lucha Brothers the titles Santana Ortiz get them Lucha Brothers essentially go away for a little bit and then you get the Young Bucks and Santana Ortiz feud that way with them having to climb back in because yeah they're champs but they're better dicks is not champs trying to get Agreed. back into the title hunt. Yeah, I like where you're going with that. I just think the Young Bucks hold it, and I feel like they do the Santana Ortiz to overcome the elite. I think that's where the play is right now. I wouldn't mind seeing Lucha Brothers versus Santana Ortiz, but I don't think the Lucha Brothers escape the cage with it. Okay. I just I don't have that feeling. But 
Okay. I no. I, I love. I love the. Yeah. I, I hope. Yeah. I hope you're wrong, but whatever. <laughs> but I think there's no otherwise. This is a huge event, and there's yeah. no title changing hand. So if there's one that's going to change hand, I think the tag team one is the essential throwaway one to change hand on a pay per view. Because in today's it, wrestling today, if there's not a fucking title change, and I'd be okay if no titles change hands, but a fan would say this is not a five star pay per view if a fucking title doesn't change hand. I would normally agree with that, but my selection for one of our remaining matches, I think, changes that perception. Oh, okay. Uh, which I, we're saving the one that we both want to talk about. So it's uh, Jericho and MJF. Jericho loses. He's got to retire and go to commentary. Go ahead. Go yeah. first. I want to hear what you say first. I think you know where I'm going to say with my previous comment. I think this is your moment that's going to hold the pay-per-view. Jericho's losing this match to MJF. I agree. I, I think Jericho's career ending to MJF makes the most sense at this point. It would be the defining title changing hands at a pay-per-view you're ending a career you're sunsetting a career at this point and it just feels like this has been the build this is the end of the build this is where it ends for jericho i love the guy but i think mjf takes it i there's just no way around it because you haven't heard the words inner circle in two weeks Mm -hmm. it's been sammy guevara santana ortiz um wardlow is I know he's on the other side, but hasn't been around. Hager hasn't been around. There hasn't been that whole, you know, fight group. It's been one yep. on one. Yep. And it's it's wrestling, essentially. Jenks, it's wrestling. Yes, yep. is Jericho going to air quotes retire? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna take a couple months off. He'll get beat up at the commentary table. He'll go do his uh, rock and wrestling cruise and his yep. tour, but at some point, somebody's going to need Jericho. They're going to egg him out of the desk. He's going to beg Tony Khan. It's wrestling. We've we've seen this yep. storyline, but I want to see how MJF does retire Jericho tonight. And I think it's important to call out Jericho's returning from AEW competition. I think that was distinguished, not from Wrestle Kingdom. Right. In Japan, not from other organizations. Will he go to other organizations out of New Japan? Probably not. But to your point, Jericho probably will go to the commentary table at some point. I'm sure he's uh, touring with Fozzie, if I don't trip over my words. Touring with Fozzie here in the next upcoming months. So that's probably needs to take him off the road for wrestling. And that at some point he's going to get coaxed out. I don't know by who, but at some point it's going to happen. But I, I just feel like Jericho's career, and this is going to be the defining moment of the pay-per-view, surprising enough, with Punk on it. This could be a defining moment of the pay-per-view. I, I agree. I agree. And now, nice reference, as we get CM Punk against Darby Allen, And there's so many things that can happen within this match. Uh, spo- I, well, because I also want to talk about, we've talked about Chelsea Green. I've met mentioned Deanna, you brought up Lana. Um, there's two more big names that are in play that yeah. one has been referenced from shoes to the crowd calling him out. But there's also another person that is recently left WWE and has a girlfriend working for this business as well. Yeah. And this, uh, if anything happens, I, I I liken it to when I think it was double or nothing when Jericho beat Omega and Moxley came out. It's going to be that type of moment here. Now, let me preference it and say this was the toughest match to pick because I have no idea what they're going to try to do here. Are they putting over Darby or are they going to let Punk win his first match in seven years? My heart's telling me they're letting Punk win and I'm choosing Punk to win this. And if they're doing that, then to that point, it's going to create that Moxley debut scenario for either Brian Danielson or Bay Bay Adam Cole to show up. And I think it's going to be Brian Danielson. I, I think that's going to be the departing shot is Punk staring at Brian Danielson. I, I can't even add words to that. 
<laughs> because I think they save Adam Cole for a little bit longer. Because, come on, he's yeah. not re-signing to WWE, period. I I will hang my life on that. He's not. He's he wants to twitch. He wants to do all this stuff. Yep. Legit. His best friends. And I'm not saying Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor. Oh, oh by no, the way, I, I bet you Trent comes back tonight too. Just in FYI. Um, oh, okay. Uh, at least Trent's mom. At least, uh, hopefully, mom. yeah, Sue. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sue. His life is in AEW. And I know, yeah, people work at different businesses or anything, but Jenks, wouldn't you love to work in the same place that your best friends do and your future wife and make I, trillions? I don't know how you say no to that. I, I don't know how you can bet against that. And I don't even know if, and let's be honest, he's been working on a handshake agreement for the past month and a half. Right. Because allegedly they had forgot to renew his contract at one point. Same thing as Alistair Black. <laughs> same thing as Alistair. What is happening? That just shows a whole level of disrespect in my mind that you can't even remember to sign or work on a contract negotiation for these people. So it, it's going to happen eventually. Maybe they hold off. I think they do hold off to possibly an episode of Dynamite or Rampage or even the next pay-per-view, which I think is full gear in November. But yeah, Baby is not coming out. I think this is Brian Danielson. Yeah, just, it has it, to be. It, as much as it's been leaked and everything, it has to be. Yeah, I I think he walks out and the roof's going to go off of Chicago if it's not already into the atmosphere when Punk walks out to wrestle and wins that match. So I know. All right, Jinx, this has been an amazing show. Definitely longer than I thought, but it needed to be. It needed to be because we, we had to tell our story first. We had to spend yep. a lot of time uh, giving love to Daphne. And then uh, there was there was some hot takes, but nothing a ton. But our predictions yep. are, were 100% right. Yeah. 100% right. Give everybody, if you want to give them your socials to follow, that's great. But tell everybody where they can follow, uh, find your 40-year dash and what uh, – promotions you want to do for that shit show no i love it <laughs> <laughs> well that shit show we were trying to figure out our 40 year trying to be somewhat productive before we turn 40 but uh, i'll give the that one's a little more entertaining we're working on our socials now we worked on the audio now we gotta work on the socials but uh we're at 40 year dash podcast on the instagram and facebook and twitter 40 year dash uh there's like 40 running across the finish line so you'll know you're on the right page to <laughs> see that but by the way, that was hand drawn by me. We just had we hired an outside contractor, and he just slapped that forty on there. So I don't know why he chose that. Thought that was the best logo to have, but hey, whatever, I'll take it. It works, um, right? It, it works. I mean, that basically encompasses the shit show or podcast is. So, uh, but yeah, we're just a bunch of three friends loving life, trying to do stuff till we're forty, and that. So it's a good time. Hope everyone can take it hot minute to come and watch, listen to us ramble on for an hour and a half. But and you guys times. are the only podcast on farmers only, which is amazing. I, you know, when you get that kind of deals and, uh, you know, just the sponsorship alone, we just love the cow herding community on farmers only. And, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> I don't know what I don't, I was Dan always referenced using up our budget somewhere on these guests that we bring on. I feel like you use it all to get farmers only to sponsor us. So, I, I mean, that's just where we're at right now. Yeah, because when he gets the Macho Man to come on the show, that's enthralling. It's, you know, we have to – we yeah, it's enthralling. We have to do a seance to even get that to be possible. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's rough. You know, we lose, we, we lose bits of our souls every time Macho Man comes on. So <laughs> – Jenks, thanks for joining me this week. Uh, we'll we'll have to do. You know what? What are you doing next week? Because it would only be right to have you come back on so we could recap um, all out. I'm pretty sure I'm free next week. We'll work out a time because I will definitely want to recap all out and what had happened. So, all right, let's. I, I definitely will be back. I love being on here. I love talking to you, man. So. We'll, we'll set that up uh, off air, and Jenks, I love you, and I will talk to you in like a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs>
This is the good neighbor, John Ross, and you're listening to the Can Crusher podcast. I don't know what kind of cans they are, but it better be ginger ale and it better be recycled if they know what's good for them. And you can take it from me because I'm a good neighbor. And whether it's weed whacking or recycling or drinking a good, refreshing beverage, I give the best advice because it's a blessing to have a good neighbor, but it's an even greater thing to be a good neighbor. Again, guys, welcome back to Can Crushers. That was Michael Jenks of the 40 Year Dash. His podcast is great, but he's been a true wrestling fan since the day I've met him. That's actually the way, yeah, we worked at the same baseball company, organization, team, whatever, but we drew each other to love. Wait, what the fuck am I saying? We, we drew off each other so much because uh, of professional wrestling. That uh, we we knew right off the bat we'd be friends for life. So go give 40 Year Dash a like, listen, follow. You'll love everything they do over there on 40 Year Dash. And as we talked, once he uh, hung up, uh, we instantly texted each other that we're going to start a group chat tonight with some of the other guys and talk about All Out. And Jenks has essentially committed to coming back next week and doing the recap with me. So I can't wait for next week to see what thoughts. Um, hopefully he writes down what we talked about because I don't go back and listen to podcasts as you've known for years. Um, so hopefully he wrote down our predictions. If not, we'll both have to listen to the show again. Great. More likes and more listens. But until then, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook, it's all at CanCrusher69. Send us an email, CanCrusher69 at gmail.com. We'll do that. I'd like to have a, a group of these guys that I've had on the show recently to do a Ask Can Crushers. So get some of those questions over. And don't forget about calling in. Tell me a hot story. Uh, leave a hot take. Tell me what you think about what's going on in pro wrestling today. And you'll be on the air like that one caller we had earlier. The phone number, 814-299-6687. Again, 814-299-6687. It goes right to a voicemail. Leave your story. If you want to say your name, great. Um, I like anonymous this is as well. That's a great word for me to say. But yeah, guys, I've loved this show. This was a different spin on it. And this is the way we're going to continue to grow so like us, share us, tell the world about Can Crushers because we're still coming. We're still coming. We're going to bring you all great wrestling news. And guys, once again, we're here. You have friends. You have family. Reach out to them. You're not alone. You're not alone. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. <laughs>